matter must be settled. I see it settled in your favor. Therefore, Father, we receive your word this morning. He said, forever, thy word is settled in heaven. As it's settled in heaven, let it be settled upon every heart this morning. As your word goes forth, let that settled word bring about somebody's turnaround testimony in the name of Jesus. Let no one return back the same this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we'll pray. And only that person said for, for the settlement, shout the loudest, amen. amen. Please, you may be seated. You can do those hands together for the Lord. I don't know who that person is in this service. You are the only one that understands what you are going through. What you are going through is beyond human description. You can't explain it, but you are going through it. The good news is that God that knows all details, the one that saw you before you arrive, it will say to you in this service this morning. I say it will say to you in this service this morning. It's my privilege to bring the word to us in this service, this second service, in this our covenant day of settlement. According to that scripture in Ezekiel 36 and verse 11, it said, I will multiply you with men, I will multiply you with men like beasts, and they shall increase and bring forth fruit. And I will say to you after your old estate, and I will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Now listen to me. Whatever is the original figure of God for you in his word. Original, original estate means original intention. His original intention for you is to prosper. His original intention is for you to live long. His original intention for you is to be in health. His original intention for you is to be the head and not the tail. Whatever is contrary, God is bringing you to your settlement this morning. Forget about what you have gone through. God is bringing you to your settlement this morning. We received the word powerfully in the first service. Very powerful. And they, we've been looking at that word, the prophetic thing for the morning. Whatever God can do, Faith can make it happen. The question again is, what can God do? He can do all things according to his word. He can do all things. In Ephesians 3 and verse 30, he said, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above. So what will God do for you this month? I did not hear that person at all. Everything that the word has proclaimed and prophesied, I see God doing it for you this month. But it is your faith that makes it to happen. It is to you according to your faith. I have seen someone that has no womb. In fact, we had a pastor, one of our pastors, you know, where he had, he was going to marry a wife. And when he got to that house, they wanted to marry. He said, the family said they cannot allow him to marry. That they don't want to give their daughter to marry. That is not for marriage. We want her to remain here. What was the reason? This lady had an accident while going to school in, a, in, a, in this uh, tertiary institution. And she, had, she was operated upon and her womb was damaged. Everything reproductively was destroyed. And this man, pastor, came and said, look, I want to marry her. They said, you can't marry her. So when he pressed on, he said, Look, our case is that she does not have a womb anymore. He said, but I can marry her. I believe all things are possible with God. God can do anything. I have faith in God. They say, you agree? Well, they got married. After they got married, they gave birth to the first boy. After the boy, they gave birth to twins. After the twins, they gave birth to another two. I don't know who looks like your case is closed. They are right there in Owari Church. If your case looks close, the God of settlement will turn things around for you. How many have faith for settlement this morning? 
Whatever God can do, your faith, say with me, my faith, will make it happen. By your faith, you will prosper. By your faith, you will live long. By your faith, you are receiving your healing. By your faith, that breakdown is turning to a breakthrough. Only that person that believes shall the Lord as a man. We've been looking at engaging the power of faith for fulfillment of prophecy. That was heavily delivered to us in the first service by our state pastor. Heavily. Engaging the power of faith for the fulfillment of prophecy. Now listen to me this morning. If you came to this service with nothing and before you is nothing, behind you is nothing, I have a good news for you. And the good news is this, there is the force of prophecy hovering around your head. That force is too powerful to leave you in the pit. That force is too powerful to leave you the way you have been. You may not have a future this morning. You may not have a background this morning. But there's a prophecy over your head. That prophecy will turn things around for you this morning. I'm not sure I heard it very loudly. Now, right now in this house, the air over your head is looking very innocent. Over there, you can't see the air right now. But listen, inside this air, there are waves moving. If you just turn in your phone, that way we connect with your phone, and you can connect with somebody in UK or somebody in any part of the world. That is how faith is. Prophecy is on your head. It's roving around all kinds of prophecy for fruitfulness, for prosperity, for increase, for breakthrough. It's moving. It's moving. As somebody extend the faith inside of him to the moving forces of prophecy, I see the word of God come to pass for you speedily. That's why it says in that scripture, Luke 1 and verse 45, Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be performance of the things the Lord has spoken. God does not speak empty words. That you don't receive the contact of the wave, it may be that something is wrong with your phone. If your neighbor receives it, if your friend receives it, then something is wrong with your phone. There's nothing wrong with what is moving. Something is moving over the winner's family. It's a prophetic year of fortune. That fortune, you are getting into it this time in the name of Jesus. I want to let you know that the world will not fail. The world will not fall to the ground. The word of God will be fulfilled. Looking for one man and one woman that will just have faith. That will believe what God says. That will take it all and swallow it all. Today, I see that word fulfilled for someone here. In Isaiah, in, 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 jo in Joshua 21 and verse 45. He said, not any of the world that the Lord has spoken fail. He said, therefore, he said, there fail not out any of the good word. Good word. Good word. That means word of prophecy. They turn bad things to good things. They turn breakdown to breakthrough. Which the Lord has spoken unto the house of winners. All came to pass. For you, all will come to pass. One of the words I had this year is, is your year of fortune. Fearful favor. It will come to pass. One of the words I had this year is, every day this year, you will hear congratulations. I had it go serve and declare it. This year, every day will be a day of congratulations for you. One of the words I had this year, that this year, it will be your Isaac order of year. Why it may be dry, why it may be gloomy, why it may be not working for others. This year, you will, things will work for you. Only that person, let me hear your letters, amen. Is, we're looking at engaging the power of faith for female prophecy. In 1 Kings 1, and verse, 18, above verse 15, it says, Blessed be the God of my father, who has spoken by, my, by, by his mouth, David, and has confirmed by his hand. God always speaks before he, he manifests with his hand. That's why he's sending the word ahead of you. Before the year began, the prophecy had already gone ahead of what 2024 holds. But if you will believe, you will attract his hand of performance. Your faith is what attracts God's hands of performance. 
You may not be able to perform it. You cannot perform it. But his hand of divine possibility, his hand of wonders, it brings it to pass. It is your faith that provokes and invites and attracts his hands of performance. That hand of his performance is coming on somebody's business. Where one of the places we've been, this man and this woman, they sit together in church. And initially the man came and said, hey, if I wanted to commit suicide, and I said, you will not need to tell me. If you wanted to commit suicide, if it's so cheap to commit suicide, you will not tell me. I said, you can't commit suicide. It's only failures that commit suicide. So, after a while, things began to change for him. Then, things became so good under one year. And the man came, I mean, the woman, they wanted to go to U.S. and U.K. So, the woman got the two visa, U.K. and U.S. visa. But the man did not get. So, the man asked the wife, what are you doing? Ha, he said, you don't know. When you are in church and they are prophesying, catch it. He said, I used to catch it too. So the husband, now when he comes to church, he watches out for every declaration because he's looking for somebody that will have faith to catch it. And he began. Then they reapplied and he got his visa. I don't know whose visa is still hanging in the air. Whose appointment is hanging in the air. Whose contract is yet to be delivered. Receive it by this settlement service in the name of Jesus. So this morning, engaging the power of faith for fulfillment of prophecy. Prophecies, what are prophecies? Prophecies are spoken words that defines our part of destiny. Prophecy are spoken words that define our part of destiny. It defines your future. Over a person or a people, it, there are prophecies, there are spoken words that defines our part of destiny. Isaiah 40, 46 and verse 10 and verse 11. Isaiah 46, verse 10 and 11. It says, declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient, ancient times, the things that are not they, are not, they are not in place right now, but it's declaring it to be. The things that are not yet. Dawn saying, my counsel shall stand. The doctor may give you a, 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 a report that you are barren, but God has declared you to be fruitful. He said, the things that don't, he said, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Look at verse 11. Calling the raven birds from the east, and the man that executed my counsel from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass. I have proposed it. I will also do it. Will God do something for you this time? So if he has said it, he will do it. He is there to execute his word. He is there to perform it. He does not speak empty words. He speaks what he will fulfill. Prophecies. What are prophecies? Prophecies are the unveiling of God's purpose and plan for a people or a nation. Is God telling you, this is my purpose for, your, for you? In Isaiah 14 and verse 24 to 27, he said, my purpose shall stand. He said, the Lord of hosts has sworn, surely, saying, surely, as I have taught, so shall he stand. So shall he, so shall he come to pass. As I have proposed, so shall he stand. I don't know what you're going through today. God's purpose in your life shall be validated in the name of Jesus. Engaging the power of faith for the fulfillment of prophecy. Faith is so powerful that it can connect your impossible circumstance to God's possibility. We had so much about that in the first service. It has the capacity to connect you to divinity so that you can experience divine possibilities. It has the power. That phone in your hand has the power to connect you to UK, even if you have never had visa before. It has the power to connect you to Germany. It has the power to connect you to any part of the world. 
Because there's a wave moving over you. All you need is to engage it. As somebody engages his faith, this time I see the prophecy over your life, over your business, over the work of your hand, coming to pass in the name of Jesus. Faith. What is faith? Faith is acting on the received word, the word received, believe and acted upon. Please take note of that. Is faith is acting on the word received, believe and acted upon. The word you don't do anything about will remain there. That there's wave moving in this house does not mean you are connected. Does not mean you are engaging it. So it has to be acted upon. Luke 1 and verse 45. Blessed is she that believe it. For there shall be performance of the things the Lord has spoken. Before the walls of Jericho came down, there was a prophecy. In Joshua 6 verse 1 to verse 3. He told them, he said, look, you will go around Jericho. And Jericho will come down after you have gone around. They have not gone around yet. In Joshua 6 and verse 20, he now told them, he said, look, they went around the seventh day on the seventh time, and the walls of Jericho came down. So God spoke his word so that the people will have faith and take responsibility. What is the responsibility? They were going around Jericho. The walls that could, you could build house on top, they were acting on faith. As they were walking, God was walking. So faith is cooperating with God based on what he has said to see scripture fulfilled. Cooperating with God based on what he has spoken to see scriptures fulfilled. This time, fortune will answer for someone in this house. I am not hearing that amen loud enough. Now why do we really need faith for the fulfillment of prophecy? Number one, you need faith for the fulfillment of prophecy, why do we need faith for the fulfillment of prophecy? God speaks according to his capacity. Not, God speaks according to his capacity, which is bigger than all our limitations. We are humanly limited. We are limited by five senses, but God operates by the supernatural sense. He speaks, I mean, we need faith so that we can Tap into God's capacity because God's capacity is bigger than our circumstance. Prophecies, in most cases, are bigger than where you are and what you have ever seen. It's telling you of something greater than where you have been. That's why you need faith. That's why I need faith. In Ezekiel 37 and verse 1 to verse 7, there was a valley of the dry bone, dead dry bone, thousands of, of dry bone, and God asked Ezekiel, can this bone live? Do you believe it can live? He said, thou knowest. And he said, son of man, prophesy. And we saw a great army emerge. For you, a great army is emerging in the name of Jesus. Why do we need faith? For the fulfillment of prophecy. Faith is the natural language of God that makes all things possible. When you begin to act in faith, you are engaging in God's language that makes all things possible. In Mark 9 and verse 23, with God, all things are possible to him that believe it. So faith is required for you to connect with the prophetic to see it fulfilled. Why do we need faith? For the fulfillment of prophecy. Faith connects you to collect whatever God has promised. Faith connects, collect, connects you to collect whatever God has promised. In Hebrew 11 and verse 2, it says, by faith, the elders obtain. Somebody this year, you are obtaining your fortune testimony. They obtain a good report. Why do we need faith? For the fulfillment of prophecy. Faith is a way of the kingdom, which makes you to be on God's side for your desired testimony. It is the ways of the kingdom, which makes you to be on God's side for your desired testimony. In that Isaiah 55 and verse 8 to verse 11, it says, My ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts. As the heaven is far from the earth, so are my ways far from your ways, 
and my thought far from your thought. When you walk by faith, you walk by the ways of God. And the ways of God are the ways of the supernatural. By your faith this time, I see the prophecy over your life. This year, fulfilled speedily in the name of Jesus. We must be reminded that God speaks according to his capacity, not according to our limitation. We are limited. Man is limited to five senses. That's why the Bible is speaking in that 1 Corinthians 5 and verse 7. It said we do not walk by sight, but we walk, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7. It said we do not walk by sight, but by faith. By faith. By, 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 by sight, you will walk by just by your feelings, by your thoughts. But when you walk by faith, you walk in the frequency of God to make all limitation become supernatural experience. This year, in your business, in the work of your hand, supernatural experience shall be your portion. Supernatural experience shall be your portion. Now, look at this. Sarah was super dead when it comes to childbearing. Abraham was super dead when it comes to childbearing. In that Genesis 18 and verse 10 to verse 14. Genesis 18, verse 10 to verse 14. And he said... I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife, she shall have, she shall have a son. And Sarah had it in a dead tender which she was, which was behind, behind him. And what did she do? She laughed. He said, now Abraham and Sarah, this is their condition. But a word of prophecy has come that you are going to have your children this time. He said, now Abraham and Sarah were old and were sticking in, in age and it ceased, it closed, it ceased to be with Sarah after the man, man or woman. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself saying, after I have waxed old, where was God when I was 20? Where was God when I was 30? When was God when I was 40? But prophecy is hanging on your head. And saying, after I have waxed old, Shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also. Abraham being old also. But look at what it says. Can we read? It says, And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of surety be, bear a child which I am old? I like us to read verse 14 together, everybody. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee. According to the time of life, Sarah shall have a son. I don't know who that person is. That prophecy for you this year is coming to pass speedily. Your human limitation describes the circumstance. But faith agrees with God's conclusion. Human limitation describes the, the circumstance. Maybe you have a medical report here in this service and you are describing what you are going through. But faith agrees and goes along with what God has concluded. For you this year, it is concluded you are entering into fortune in all fairs. God speaks according to his integrity, not our unpredictability. Man is very unpredictable. Man is never stable. Man can change, but God remains constant. So God, a constant God, the never changing God is the one talking to somebody here. That what I did before, I will do again. It will do again for someone in this service today. <laughs> Titus 1 and verse 2. God cannot lie. He say, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie, cannot lie, Promised before the world began. So God cannot lie. He doesn't have the nature. That's why what he has said for you, it will come to pass speedily in the name of Jesus. Amen. Quickly, how does faith facilitate the, pro, pro, the fulfillment of prophecy? How does faith? You may be asking, if my case is like this, how is it going to come to pass? How does faith facilitate the fulfillment of prophecy? How does faith facilitate the fulfillment of prophecy? 
We like us to be reminded that it takes the hand of God, it takes the hand of God which provokes, provoked by faith to deliver any prophetic agenda. It takes the hand of God which delivers by faith to provoke or to bring to pass any divine agenda. Every time faith shows up, God's hand shows up. And God's hand is a wonder hand. When your faith shows up for fruitfulness, God's hand shows up to take away the barriers, to take away the limitation and bring about your supernatural fruitfulness. When your faith shows up, God's hand follow for performance. God's hand is for performance. In Nehemiah 2 and verse 18, that man was not an engineer, Nehemiah. That man was not an architect. He was a car bearer, a steward in the king's palace. But this man built a wall of, Je of Jerusalem in 52 weeks. That's the record. Because according to that time, it should have been built in three years. But how did he do it? He gave his testimony in verse 18. In that scripture, Nehemiah 2 and verse 18. He said, because of the good hand of the Lord that's upon me. So, every time your face shows up over the prophetic world, the hand of God's performance comes on it. I don't know who is in this service this morning. You may not look like it, but you believe. You may not look like it, but you have faith. The hand of God's performance is attracted to you in the name of Jesus. No wonder Isaiah 53 and verse 1 says, Blessed is she that believeth. He said, what believe our report? What believe what God says? He says, woman, unto whom is the arm of the flesh revealed. Every time you have faith or you believe, the hand of God is committed to, to perform. It's committed to be revealed. By the hand of God this time, I see you experiencing the supernatural in the name of Jesus. Well, quickly, giving ourselves wholly to the demand of prophecy is the only proof that we believe. Giving ourselves, taking up responsibility, that's what it means. You can't say you believe prophecy and not act on prophecy. When they told them the walls of Jericho will come down, they have a, the house of Rahab was on top of that, 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 that wall. If the thing falls down, the wheat is also in another height. But they believe that the wall will come down. What caterpillar will find it difficult to pull down? They say, look, with our faith, we'll bring down cheaply. I don't know what you have been struggling to do. By your faith, as you take up responsibility, I see you doing it cheaply in the name of Jesus. Amen. Remember, it has been said this year, every adult winner, you are winning at least 10 souls before the middle of this year. And which can be done within one month. Remember the testimony of that young man? He said he had his target and began to engage in winning souls. And one of the souls was sick. He went to the hospital, and while he was in the hospital, he was trying to pay the bill. The money he had with him was not enough. So while he was looking for, to go and get more money, a man was looking at him. I said, why, why, why are you like this? He said, I want to get more money to pay for that person. He said, is he your mother? He says, not my mother. He's my convert. He said, which church do you belong? And he told him. So the man there paid. And the man said, I want to go to your church. And the whole family followed, and he met his target in one week. That same one week, he had a call from his elder brother. He said, there's a man standing by you right now. He's giving you a car key. That car is yours. Then while he was still celebrating, he said, now there's a paper in an envelope for him. That paper is for you. It's for a house, a two-bedroom flat in Abuja. I don't know who you are. As you champion the drive of growth, God will glorify you. I'm not sure that person had me at all. I said, God will glorify you. In the name of Jesus. So commitment for us to see prophecy fulfilled, what must we do? We must be committed to speaking the word, speaking faith-filled word, cont contrary to circumstance, no with contrary circumstance, no withstanding. Faith does not speak circumstance. Speak speaks the word of God. Speak, faith does not speak what is happening. Speak speaks what is written. 
It speaks what God has concluded. So, as we engage what God has said, it's my year of fortune. Go back to that business. Go back and lay hand on that document. It's my year of fortune. Fortune is answering for me. Let everything that needs to hear, hear. Because your fortune is coming. Because the word, the more you speak that word, God, like we had, God will pick, I mean, angels will pick it and God will fix it. God is fixing your fortune for you this year. In your business, in your career, God is fixing it for you this year. In Psalm 81 and verse 10 to verse 14, it says, as you are spoken in his ears, it says, open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Open my, your mouth wide and I will feel it. This year, God will fill you with good things. Yeah. It will fill your business with good things. Yeah. You see, the unfortunate thing is that people speak like the world. In this kingdom, faith language is the language of this kingdom that makes you to walk in the supernatural. When this commission began, for instance, there's an accountant, his name is uh, it was Pastor Philip. I work with him sometime. And he said, I was the one Papa said to. When the commission started, he said, never say there is no money. He said, I was the one he said to. He said, so at times when, they, when I see that we are going to pay salary and there's nothing to pay, I say, yeah, money's coming, sir. Money's coming. Your own money is coming. I say, your, money, your own money is coming. So you must give voice to the word of faith, to the word of prophecy. Don't say what they say. You hear some people say they are finished. You are not finished. You are just starting. You are just beginning. And I see the word of God fulfilled concerning you. In Mark 11 and verse 23, he said, If you shall say to this mountain, be moved and be cast on the sea, you will have whatsoever you say. Now, this is one of the scriptures that turn around the destiny and the life of the, our, our grandfather, Kenehi Agins. Kenehi Agins was bedridden for 16 months. And the doctor said, it was around 14 years, the doctor said he was not going to see his 16th birthday that he would die before that time. The pastor of his church came and killed him. Because when that pastor came that day, he prayed for him and his, grand, and his grandmother and him. He said, we pray for this family that is about to lose their precious child. So the pastor killed him properly. So he said he had the pastor said that. But he had mouth. Somebody has mouth this morning. You have the mouth for faith. So he said he came across Mark 11 and verse 23. If you shall say to this mountain, be moved and be cast to the sea, you will have whatever you say. The doctor said you cannot see 16th birthday. So he began to speak. He said, you paralysis. You are giving way. I'm still going to walk again. I'm going back to school again. I'm going to do what God said I should do. And began declaring it. And on one of the days... He said, I'm going to the parlor. They will not wash me today. They will not bring food to me today. I'm coming there to eat. And he stood out of paralysis because he began to say it. I don't know who that person is. As you begin to say it, they may be laughing at you. They may be mocking you. It is your year of fortune already. Yeah. Say one more time, it's my year of fortune. Yeah. It's my Isaac order of year. Yeah. Throughout 2024. It shall be every day congratulations. Only that person say very loud amen. amen. How do we, how does faith facilitate the fulfillment of prophecy? Faith is a must. Faith is a must expect to see fortune 2024 come to pass. It's a must. Because in scripture it says, in that Hebrew 11 and verse 6, it says, He that must come to him must know that he is, and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And in Hebrew 1, you see, faith is, ab is about hope. If you are not hopeful, we had so much about that on, on, on Friday. If you are not hopeful, you cannot have faith. Faith is about hope. Hope is expectation. Hope is a womb that carries faith. He may, everyone may have lost hope about you. Don't lose hope about yourself. Abraham had hope against hope in that Romans 4 and verse 17 to 18. So in case there's no, it looks like, your case looks like hopeless. I want you to have hope in the world. The word of God coming your way. The word of prophecy this year. Hope is coming alive again. 
I say hope is coming alive again. So have faith that 2024 will be your year of fortune. Things will change in your favor. For instance, it takes, it takes faith to see us enjoy fearful favor. And how do we enjoy fearful favor? In that, Isaiah, in that Psalms 102, verse 13 and verse, 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 12, verse 13, it says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For thy time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. He said, For thy servant take a pleasure in her stone and favor a stone thereof. Now, it is your year of favor. How many believe that? How many will enjoy favor this year? Now, boy, he's showing you what to do. Faith is about taking responsibility. In the words of our father, Bishop David, we said, Any faith that makes God absolutely responsible for the affairs of your life is an irresponsible faith. Faith gives you responsibility. Faith is work. And one of the work is favor is kingdom. We have said that home sale this year is doubling before the middle of this year. There's somebody next Sunday that must come to church with you next Sunday. What you are hearing now, he has never heard it for years. He may have a Christian name. You are there to invite him. We had a group right this morning. They have gone before the first service to comb the street and bring people here. We had them also the second service. Don't just fold your arm. Take responsibility. As you are favoring the kingdom, God is favoring you with fortune. I see God favor you in the name of Jesus. If that person is here, let me hear that is amen. So we must start engaging to see us fulfill, prophecy fulfill. Engage, we engage, how do we engage? We engage for fortune to take place for us this year. We engage in kingdom advancement prayer, number one. Two, we engage in soul winning endeavor. And number three, we engage in, kin, in, in kingdom care covenant. Now let me say what it is. Number one, we engage in kingdom advancement prayer. That is you are praying, Lord, let this Sunday service, let there be massive salvation. Lord, let this service, let everyone invited, let them be on their way to church. Lord, move across this land this Sunday and let the wind that blow the quail in the wilderness, blowing men into the service. You are praying kingdom advancement prayer. Lord, let every soul that has been saved, let them be established. You are praying kingdom advancement prayer. You see that in Matthew 6, and verse 6 to 9. It's a light that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So you are engaging in kingdom advancement prayer. That woman was 80, 84 years old. Ania is her name. In Luke 2, and verse 37. She was praying kingdom advancement. That is how to favor the kingdom for your fortune to answer. Number two, engaging in soul winning. There's somebody you are inviting. There's somebody you are sharing your testimony with. There's somebody you are leading to Christ. During your break time, on the street, your customers, you are leading them to Christ. As you are doing that, God is taking note. And somebody's fortune is opening up this time. I say somebody's fortune is opening up this time. In 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17 to 20, you are ambassadors of Christ. That means you are God's mouthpiece. You are God's representative. So everywhere you find yourself, let them know the kingdom you represent. Let them know what the kingdom can do. And one of the things the kingdom can do is it, it can save them. It can deliver them. What it did in your life, it can do in their life. This week, many shall be saved by your hand. How do you provoke the prophetic word for, the, for fortune this year? By kingdom care covenant. Kingdom care covenant talks about you taking care of the needs of others. There are people, you see, there are people around you, they are in need. And one of the cheapest ways you can preach is to care for people. He has not eaten. Five children. They are always looking through their window. They see you cooking. They, they have never cooked for long. And here you are, in the name of you have faith, in the name of a winner, you have never helped them. You have never given them bread. You have never given them anything. I imagine somebody, you going to the, your children are going to the same school, and the neighbor's children are going to the same school, and <laughs> you drop them, you, and there's space in your car. You don't say, no, no, they are not, 
They don't have cars, so they should keep trekking. Now, you don't care. Because if you care, you will win the world. This time, as we show our care to the world, I see many saved in the name of Jesus. Galatians 6, and verse 10. It says, do good to all men, especially them that are of the household of faith. Then, Philippians, I mean, Proverbs 28 and verse 27. It says, when you do good to the less privileged, you are helping yourself in the, in, invariably. He said, when you give to the poor, you will not lack any good thing. As you show goodness to others, you will not lack any good thing. <laughs> Quickly, as we round up in this service, what is in kingdom advancement prayer or kingdom advancement endeavor for me? What is there for me in kingdom advancement endeavor? When I engage in kingdom advancement endeavor, what is there for me? Among many blessings of kingdom advancement endeavor, when you engage, when you engage in kingdom advancement endeavor, you enjoy supernatural supply. You enjoy supernatural supply. In Luke 10 and verse 1 to verse 7, when Jesus sent them, he said to them that greet no man on the way. He said, before you, whatever table is set, eat. That means when you go do his bit, he does your supply. This year, God will do your own supply. In Luke 22, verse 35, when they went out and returned, he said, when I sent you without script, do you lack anything? They said they lack nothing. As you champion the cause of the kingdom this year, you will not lack any good thing. Amen. Only that person, let me hear that as amen. amen. What do you enjoy by engaging in kingdom advancement? You enjoy supernatural fruitfulness. Exodus 23, 25, it says, shall bless your bread and your waters. It will take sickness away from you. None shall be barren in the land. So as you are engaging, you are expressing your obedience of faith in taking responsibility, thereby opening yourself for fortune. What more? You enjoy healing. Healing in your body and wholesomeness. Healing and wholesomeness. Proverbs 13 and verse 17. It says, a faithful ambassador is held. God keeps you in health to prove to you that in your kingdom, healing is your portion. He keeps you in health. The ambassador of any nation enjoys the benefit of that nation. And one of the benefits of this nation is health. This time, every sickness around you, I see them bow in the name of Jesus. One more, number four, you enjoy long life. Long life. Long life. In that John 15 and verse 1 and 2. He said, when you engage in kingdom advancement, he said, I am the true vine, and my father is a husbandman. He said, every brand that beareth fruit, for bearing not fruit, it take it away. And every brand that beareth fruit, it purges. That means it takes away the poison. It takes away the pain. It takes away anything that is in you so that you can bear more fruit. So while you are on the go, you are only telling God, I'm a candidate for healing. This time, I see longevity becoming your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. On this covenant day of settlement, I'd like you to lift up your voice and lift up your hand. Lord, said to me. Lord, said to me. Lord, said to me according to your word. 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 Let him hear you this hour. Lord, said to me according to your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Today, whatever represents troubles, unrest, whatever represents difficulty of any kind, God is settling somebody in this service. Amen. Only that person say very loud, amen. amen. I say God is settling you in this service. Amen. In First Peter 5 and verse 10, he said, after you have suffered a while, the God, God of eternal glory. He said, after you have, he said, the God of all grace, who has called you unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After you have suffered a while, make you perfect, established, and strengthen you and said to you. I don't know what is not working around you. God will say to you this time. When God settles you, it, turns, it gives you peace for your trouble. 
When God settles you, he gives you fortune for your misfortune. When God settles you, he breaks broke to protocol and takes away your barrier for your delivery. When God settles you, he gives you help for your difficulties. Today, I declare God settles somebody here. I say God is settling somebody here. Maybe you came here and it's like you're about to throw in the towel. Like, like, like the man Peter. In Luke 5 and verse 5. Peter had toiled all night, but he caught nothing. Luke 5, verse 5 to verse 8. He says, I've toiled all night. I've done all I need to do. Maybe that's the kind of situation. And you don't know what else to do. That's why you came to this service. God of all settlement is settling somebody here. And by the word, Jesus spoke. He said, launch out in the afternoon. And he caught fish that he could not catch in the night. I don't know who you are. If you have failed in the night, this is your own day of fortune in the name of Jesus. What does it take for you to be settled? Like we've told you all this morning, engage, enter the covenant of service. Covenant of stewardship is the jackpot of all settlement. Covenant of stewardship is the jackpot of all settlement. The moment they agreed to serve God, Pharaoh let them go. Covenant of stewardship is the jackpot of settlement. In 2 Chronicles 20, 15, if you read from verse 3 to verse 7, there was trouble to these people. No one could go in, no one could go out. But when they turned to God to serve God, in verse 12 to verse 15, the Bible said they enter into a covenant to serve God. And as they serve him, the Bible says, they had rest instead of trouble. Whatever is troubling your business, troubling your marriage, troubling your destiny, today, by this service, enter into your settlement. To be settled means to render to you your claim. Whatever blessing is still hanging over your head that is yet to be claimed by you, I see them deliver in the name of Jesus. So how do we serve God to make sure we are settled? We must serve him willingly. We've been told in, this, in the first service, serve him willingly, serve him righteously, serve him faithfully, serve him fruitfully, and serve him acceptably. Serve him willingly. 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 16 to verse 17. So willing. Serve him righteously. Matthew 7 and verse 21 to 22. Serve him in righteousness. Serve him faithfully. Be accountable as you serve him. 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 6. Serve him fruitfully. Be productive. God does not reward effort. A reward, reward made. I mean, result made. Serve him fruitfully. Luke 19 and verse 17 to 20, 17 to 19. Serve him acceptably. Hebrew 12 and verse 28. Today, I see somebody settled in the name of Jesus. If that person is there, wave that hand to him and declare your settlement. Declare your settlement. Tell him, Lord, this year, I will serve you. This year, I'm winning soul. This year, I'm praying for the souls. This year, I will be on the front, forefront of serving you as you Give me favor, fearful favor. Go ahead and talk to him. Let him hear your voice this morning. Lord, let today and this service be for my settlement. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. God will settle somebody in this service. That jailer in Acts 16 and verse 31, he was going to kill himself. And Peter said, don't do that. I mean, Paul said, don't do that. He said, believe on the Lord Jesus, and you and your household shall be saved. Life without Christ is a life registered for crisis. Jesus said, I am the way. It is, I will show you the way. I am the way to your peace. I am the way to your settlement. I am the way to your joy. I am the way to anything that God promised. Just think of anything God promised. But for you to have everything Jesus has made available, you must settle with God in order for God to settle with you. You must settle with God in order for God to deliver all that is available. You may be in church, but you are, God does not know you. You may be in church and have Christian name and even be baptized, but you know your name is not written in the book of life. Hear what it says. It says, oh, either 
call upon him shall not be ashamed. Romans 10 and verse 12. All those that call upon him shall not be ashamed. I want to give somebody a privilege this morning to give your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. To give your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You have played church, but I'm talking about relationship. You may not have another chance. This is your moment of hope. This is your moment of turnaround. I'd like to pray for that boy, that girl, that man, that woman. You are also here this morning. You are saying, Pastor, I, have, I don't think God can forgive me. Now listen to me. You are the best person God can forgive. He can forgive anyone, no matter if only you can turn and tell him, I recognize you as my Savior this morning. That man and that woman, I'd like to pray for you. You are saying, Pastor, pray for me. I want to experience divine settlement this year. I want to experience fortune this year. I want to give my life to Christ. Put your right hand on your chest, that man. Put your right hand on your chest, that woman. That boy, that girl, put that right hand on your chest. Now, just talk to him. Tell Jesus, come into my heart. With your right hand on your chest. Now, put that right hand there. Now, lift up your other hand. I will pray with you right there. Put, put up your other hand. I will pray with you. If you are doing that, we don't have that time. Now, stand to your feet, that man and that woman. With your right hand on your chest. Just keep that hand and make your way right here. I'd like to pray for you this morning. Every man, every woman, say yes to Jesus this morning. I like to give my life to Jesus. I don't want to go the way I came. Chuck clap for them as they come from everywhere. You are saying, Jesus, I want to be my, I want to be my Lord and Savior. I don't want to go the way I came. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. That man and that woman, you cannot afford to return the way you came. Let Jesus have his way. Let him have his way this morning. Let him have his way this morning. Jesus is the way. You have been playing religion, but you are saying today, Jesus, I want you to be in the center of my life. I don't want to go the way I came. I don't want to go the way of my life. I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. That man, you cannot afford to remain the way you are. Church, I told you, I'm still clapping. Somebody is still sitting down. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you. Don't allow this moment to pass by. Don't allow this moment to pass by. It's your moment of change. It's your moment of turnaround. It's your moment of turnaround. It's your moment of change your story. You cannot afford to go back the way you came. Let today be that day. Let today be that day. The day of your salvation. The day of change your story. Your settlement is beginning. Today is your day. Don't give it to another man. Today is your day. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. If you are coming, somebody is still sitting and say, well, I don't want anyone to see me. Do you know Jesus so loves you that he died in public and died naked for you? He was not ashamed of you. You cannot afford to be ashamed of him. If you are still sitting down there and you need to be here, run up here. Don't let this moment pass you by. Jesus will not reject you. He's never ashamed of you. Let today be your own day of salvation. Now, for everyone in front, this is the greatest moment of your life, a moment of change of story. I'd like you to put your right hand on your chest. And we'll be praying this prayer together. Believe everything you're saying in this prayer, and your life will never be the same. Say with me, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. Today, I surrender my life to you. Save me. Deliver me from the power of sin and Satan. Forgive me of my iniquities. Cleanse me by your blood. Write my name in the book of life. From today, I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Now let me pray with you. Father, I pray for this precious soul. The grace that brought them today, the same grace keep them. Every handwriting of hell and darkness over this destiny be broken right now. The grace to continue this race is released upon every one of these souls. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. God bless you. Please, I like the officials to still give you something. So I'd like you to turn this way. Look at those officials waving their hand. I'd like you to go with them. Go with them. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Somebody that is excited.